Now I want to talk about the control aspect. First we covered over the power, the control, and we'll get later we'll get into deception. But I want to really focus on the control aspect of it right now. Now the control aspect is, is very important. What we really, really want to do is control our body as we're going home. The better I control my body, the better I'll be able to control this. If I've got a consistent, repeatable delivery, which is what scouts look for, a consistent, repeatable delivery, I'll be able to execute my pitches with precision because there's no variances. I'm consistently repeating the same move, the same move, the same move. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that I can change and find that release point. If my body's all moving in unison, doing everything it's supposed to do, I can make easy micro adjustments with my release point to make the ball do different things within the strike zone, hit different locations, have a little different movement. But it's going to be very, very challenging if I've got three or four different uh, deliveries on the way to the plate. So I want to keep myself and my motion and my body under control and repeat it consistently. Now I'm going to talk about several aspects. and I'm going to cover a couple of laws. A couple of laws are things that we have to deal with as pitching coaches. We have to understand what we have to deal with with our players, but two laws that we have to live within the parameters of. Another thing I'm going to discuss is the front side. As the front side is going home, there's different aspects of my body that consist and make up to the front side. Also going to talk about direction. Direction is very, very important in our power aspect, but it's equally as important in our control aspect because that's going to guide me and lead me toward my, my, to my main target. Now, what we need to do, as I mentioned earlier, is repeat this. Repeat it over and over and over. So when you're done pitching, and if you're, if you're watching a game on television, pay attention to what their front foot does. When you're done pitching, you should be able to look down and have one footprint. One exact footprint, no overlays, just one footprint. That's when we know the body's been repeated. It's repeated, and it's repeated consistently. Next, next thing we talk about is that feel aspect. If I'll be able to make those adjustments by how it feels. The more bit pitches I throw, the better I can get. I'm making micro adjustments, high, low. When do I release the ball? Some I would do it on purpose. Some I do make my adjustments to stay within the strike zone. So those are very, very important aspects to the control portion of this. The main reason we train is so that we can repeat that move over and over, and that's through a process called muscle memory. The more we consistently do the same motion over and over, our bodies will sink in to that movement, and it'll remember it and remember it. And by the time you're done, you should be able to throw a strike with your eyes closed because you'll understand the body does. It starts to go on autopilot, and then after it does that, now I can really work on the feel portion of it, where that's more of the computer part of the game, where I can make my adjustments on purpose so I can effectively do what I want to do within the strike zone. Okay, I brought Mike back out to illustrate, help us illustrate the two laws. Okay, law number one is this. Wherever the head goes, the body follows. Mike's six foot five, eh, probably about 250, right? So wherever I go, I can control his body by moving his head. Okay, so that's the first law that we have to deal with. So as we're going home toward home plate, if I go off this way, I'm going to go offline. So I want to make sure that this head is in control heading down that target line so that my body can follow along with it on the target line. Okay, now we're going to talk about the second law. And the second law is this. Wherever this front shoulder goes, the back shoulder is going to follow on the same plane. So if this front shoulder is coming along this way, you notice his back shoulder is coming around on that same plane. Conversely, if I take the shoulder and it drives down, notice this back shoulder comes up on the same plane above the shoulder. So how we rotate this, this front shoulder is going to determine where our arm slot, where our release points are going to be. If I can stay from a control aspect in this where the shoulder is driving down, I'll stay within the framework of the strike zone a lot easier. All right, I'm going to use Mike to illustrate the, the seven parts of the front side. Seven parts of the front side can be labeled as the head, the shoulder, the elbow, the glove, the hip, the knee, and the foot. All of these linked together, going down the target line, will make it a lot easier for us to maintain control of the strike zone. Now understand that we have seven different moving parts. So that's why check control can be such a challenge for a lot of us, because we have a lot of different moving parts, and if they're not in line, it's going to be very difficult to execute our pitch within the strike zone. But I want to really focus on two main aspects of it, or actually three main aspects of it. The head, the elbow, and the foot. If I can keep these three on line, the others generally will follow along with it. So I want to make sure that this elbow 
is on line to that target line. This foot is placed right down to the center of the target line, and my head is right behind my shoulder in line with my elbow. So if we can focus on those three aspects of it, even though we've got seven different moving parts, these three aspects will be able to control our bodies a little easier so we can execute within the framework of the strike zone. Okay, as I mentioned, there are three main aspects that we really want to focus on, the head, the elbow, and the foot. But I'm going to really dissect it even more and show you how important this elbow is and, and what we move. Now understand, we're created to move in circular motions. Everything we do has a rotational aspect to how we move. Okay, so what I want to do is really understand what's going on with this elbow. For example, if I come here and my elbow comes out this way, our natural movement will be this way. We want to complete that circle. So if I go out this way and my glove comes out this way, two things are going to occur. Our bodies are going to understand that this is in the way. I cannot throw there without this um, arm being in the way. So what is he going to naturally going to do? He's going to try to clear that out of the way. As soon as he does that, now his shoulders will start to rotate on this plane. Okay. Secondly, is if I come here and I take my glove here, my natural motion that I'm going to do is, is a circle rotational motion. So my arm is going to track this way. So what I try to do with my students is I try to get up in this way and take the elbow forward. So as he goes down, and I'm going to stop it with a slight bend right here. And now as he goes forward, now I can create a line instead of a circle. So understand, we move in circular motions. And if I can make my first move out of my, out of my separation toward the target with my elbow, I'll have a stand a better chance staying on this line as opposed to here where I'm going to have to make an adjustment naturally this way. This is not quite as efficient. So what I want to do, if I focus on this, is I want to take that elbow here, take my glove toward the target, have a nice bend in my elbow from this position, and now he's going to take a step, and you're going to see where to take this elbow right down the target line. And it stays and maintains the target, stays within the integrity of the strike zone. I'd like to talk about a subject that's going to illustrate both the power aspect and the control aspect of our delivery. It's a great illustration that you can use for your, for your students to help them understand and physically and, and mentally uh, conceptualize what we're trying to get across. And that's the illustration of the, of the steering wheel and the gas pedal. So when we throw a pitch, we have two different parts. We have the front side and the back side. The front side would be construed as or constituted as your, your steering wheel. It's basically the front side is going to take me to my target. It's going to steer me down that target line. So I want to confuse my, my steering wheel with my gas pedal. My gas pedal is mainly for the power, where my acceleration fuzz. So that's where my leg drive comes in. So that's my hip rotation. And it's mainly coming from the back side, with the exception of the front side being your obliques to help rotate your, rotate your torso. But for overall, my front side is going to be like the steering wheel. So if I'm going down the, down the street and I wanted to go faster, I wouldn't take the steering wheel and do this. I just press on the gas pedal. So I don't want to add my steering wheel and mix it in with my gas pedal by, by accelerating my steering wheel or my front side and bypassing the utilization of my power side or my gas pedal. So when, I'm, when I want to go faster, I want to drive off of this further, faster, harder, and rotate my hips to help accelerate my arm through the zone. So if we can conceptualize thinking two different parts, the front side being the steering wheel, the guidance system to where I'm going to throw it, and the back side being the gas pedal, the power component where it's going to help me accelerate and increase velocity. So in summary, I want to utilize my steering wheel, which is my front side, my seven body parts, my head, my shoulder, elbow, all the way down to my foot. I want to use that part to go down my target line, and I want to use my back side or the gas pedal, which would be my legs and my hips and obviously my arm had to accelerate in that direction and where my steering wheel is taking me. So I want to utilize those components, separate components, where you integrate them together and sequence it and time it at just the right time. I'm going to have Matt help illustrate a drill that I call pitching in a phone booth. The purpose behind this is to help us improve our control and our command throughout the pitch. Now Matt's going to stand to the side here and he's going to create a phone booth or a hallway, however you want to view it, but he's going to be right in this position and we're going to use this as our strike zone. So the, the width of this is going to be the strike zone um, 
that we're going to be pitching it. Now I'm going to get in this position. I'm going to ask you when my hand is in the strike zone and when it's out of the strike zone. So from this position, I'm in my, my foot touch position ready to throw the baseball. Is my hand in the, stri in the phone booth? Okay, if I take, remember the, the, the first or second law, my back shoulder is going to follow my front shoulder. If my front shoulder goes out this way, my back shoulder is going to come out this way. Is my hand now in the phone booth? Okay, is it in? Is it in? Okay, at this point, now it's in, if I let it go, I'm going to throw it in into the dugout. So what that's going to do is now I'm basically working from outside the strike zone back to inside the strike zone, which is going to jeopardize my command. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try to work within the framework of that phone booth. So now I'm going to get in the same position as my hand in the strike zone. Okay? As I start to rotate, now I'm going to rotate my shoulders forward and up as opposed to around. So as I rotate, it's in the strike zone. Strike zone. Strike zone. So you can see that my arm stays within the integrity of that strike zone. The benefit behind this is this. It's already inside the strike zone. The only thing I have to concern myself is when I release it. Do I release it high, low, or middle to, to maintain the, the integrity of the strike zone? It's already working from inside the strike zone, where the other way was working from outside the strike zone back into the strike zone. If we do it this way, our control and our command will improve.